Admiral Thomas M. Dyke has retired. In the submarine service, dangerous situations are commonplace. But in this story, we will watch Sea Dragon as she struggles with two of the most deadly and dreaded emergencies that can befall an undersea boat. December 1942. America had been at war one full year, a year of few triumphs and many bitter frustrations. Sea Dragon went to war on the day it started, and by the end of the war she had a proud record. On the evening of December 19, 1942, Sea Dragon found herself under the lash of Japanese destroyers. For 16 hours she had been viciously attacked with depth charges, relentlessly held below the surface. The men in our submarines didn't expect to get away scot-free. They expected to hear the depth charges exploding around them. It was part of the game. But this attack on Sea Dragon had been going on too long. 16 hours now. Commander Pete Farrell of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania was skipper of Sea Dragon. About them coming down through the water? Yeah. You know, some little black barrels full of tea and tea. With our name on them. I don't mind those so much. The ones I don't like are the to whom it may concern jobs. That one sounded closer. Boy, they really have us nailed to the stake. What's the skipper going to do? I don't know. If we surface, the destroyers will kick our teeth in. We can't stay down here much longer. Boy, would I give her a breath of Pennsylvania air. Pennsylvania air? Any air. We've about had it, Rollo. What do you hear? Destroyer propellers. Fading. He's shifting back to long scale, sir. Do you think? Could be. I think we're on the outside of that pattern, Jack. Not far outside, but outside. Do you think he's lost us? Maybe. Let's wait and see. Ask Mr. Rue to test atmosphere for CO2, please. Tell Mr. Rue the captain wants a test for CO2. CO2 tests 6%. 6%. Rising fast. 6%, sir. Rising. 10% were woozy. 15% were dead. All the CO2 absorbent spread? Yes, sir. Any oxygen bottles left? RPM. They're going away too, sir. I think. Jack, what would you do if you were a Japanese can skipper looking for a sub? Well, after dropping depth charges for 16 hours without hitting anything, I'd go home and claim I'd sunk the whole U.S. fleet. I heard depth charges going off very far away. There you go. Sinking the whole U.S. fleet. 
Let's go up. Propellers heading toward us. What does it sound like to you? I don't know, sir. So slow. Three, maybe four knots. Listen to it, Jack. Yeah, I think so, too. There's a Japanese sub down here with us. The question is, does he know where we are? We've got to find out. I'm going to make a 90-degree turn to the right. Let me know if the sub turns right, too. Aye, aye, sir. Port ahead, one-third. Come right to 277. Port ahead, one-third. Come right to 277. He's turning, Captain. He's right with us. Okay, so he knows where we are. We can't shoot him this far down. He can't shoot us. Sir, atmosphere test, 8%. Jack, we got a surface. Then it'll be dog eat dog. What's the phase of the moon? Couldn't be worse, Captain. Full moon now rising. Put us down moon from them. Give me a course. There's gonna be any silhouettes in the lovely Pacific. It's gonna be him, not us. Course 187 will do it, sir. Come left to 187. All ahead, one third. Come left to 187, all ahead, one third. Keep the bearings coming. This is the captain. I think the destroyers have lost us, but there's a Japanese submarine trailing us. There's almost no air left in the boat, so we haven't got much choice. We've got to go up, so as soon as we get in position, we're coming up shooting. Stand by in the after torpedo room, open the outer doors at 50 feet. Well, here we go. I don't mind taking on a carrier or even a battle wagon. But slugging it out with another submarine <laughs> gives me the creeps. Take her up to periscope depth. Sound. Keep me posted. He's dead astern of us, sir. Up scope. Uh, down scope. Lovely, lovely. Moonlight all over the place. Why does the moon have to be so doggone bright out here when you can't do anything about it? Okay, we'll surface. Well, let's make sure we're the first to shoot. And tell Mr. Miller, as soon as the main induction opens, I want those engines on fast, in a head flank speed. All the head flank? What's he trying to do, run away? It looks like it. Well, why not stick around and fight? It's an even match. I'm not the skipper. Stand by to jam air. We might have to go right back down again, so pump in every pound you can get. Fire one. Fire two. Both torpedoes fired electrically, sir. Both running hot and true. Very well. Look out. Be alert for torpedo wakes coming this way. If he's headed straight toward us, our chances of hitting are about zero. All I want to do is shake them a little. Nothing like torpedoes coming at you to make you spoil your aim. Sure hope our... Sound reports high-speed propellers coming toward us. Torpedoes. Look out! Can you see any wakes? Nothing yet, sir. Yes, here they come. One, two, three... There are four of them, sir. Here they are. Should we swing her, Captain? Pull it, Jack! 
shot himself a beautiful spurt of fish. He's got us boxed in and there's no time to turn. You dive under him? I don't want to be pinned down there again. He's coming right up our back. Helm, come right to 187 and hold it. Sound collision alarm. What's going on, sir? I'm trying to give these fish the smallest target I can. Helm, he's right a half degree. Right half degree. Aye, aye, sir. That's right. Now hold it. How much longer, Skipper? None. Stand by. Close, but no cigar. We're gonna need a new paint job on the port side when we get home. Well, we got work to do. Now we're gonna get him. Sub, sink, sub. Where till they hear that back at Pearl? I don't know. We only have four fish left and they're in the forward torpedo tubes. I guess we're gonna swing around and try to get a broadside shot at her. I wonder why the skipper doesn't change course. This way we're just getting further away from the target. Rollo, go back to maneuvering and find out why we can't get more speed. I'll go bend the throttles, Captain. He isn't gonna fight at all. He's just gonna run away, Bill. Ethan, Captain. Two engines on battery charge, sir. Two on propulsion, a head standard. Very well. Ethan, Captain. The low pressure blowers are back in business, sir. Good. Bridge. Bridge, aye, aye, sir. How's the weather now? Not a cloud in the sky, sir. But the air does feel a little wetter than it did. Very well. What's eating the skipper? I don't know. Maybe he's wishing now he stayed and fought it out with that sub. Ridge? Ridge, aye. How long before dawn? It's breaking now. Daylight in another five minutes. What are we gonna do? I'm going in and talk to the captain. I'll go with you. Captain? Yes. The bridge reports only a minutes before dawn, sir. You want to take it down? No. You mean you want to stay on the surface during daylight, sir? Yep. Have the officer of the deck change course to 090 and ring up full speed. Aye, aye, sir. Let me know when the batteries have a full charge, and I mean full. Aye, sir. May I ask where we're going, sir? For Ball Harbor. Bowl, sir? That's right. Isn't that where the Japanese are basing their subs for this area? Yes, sir, but... Would Rebol you expect to find a Japanese sub in Pearl Harbor? No, sir. They won't be expecting us either. That bird that took a shot at us last night is gonna get her right where he lives. You mean you're going into the harbor at Rabaul? We might even tie up at the dock. I couldn't stick around last night because he would have pulled those destroyers back on us. But no doggone Japanese sub is going to shoot at my boat and get away with it. Yes, sir. Can we get a full battery charge, Rollo? Every amp, Captain. Okay. Take her down. and dime on Rapal's main street. I didn't realize it was such a big base. Wait a minute. Here he comes. 
What do you know? This guy is coming home on the surface. Guess he wants to hear band music. Well, he's gonna hear music. A little thing called Fish Tune from Sea Dragon. Stand by for a setup. Barry. Mark. 058. Range. Mark. 2,000 yards. Down, scope. Steady as you go. Steady as you go, aye, aye, sir. It's gonna be a straight bow shot. Up, scope. What's the matter? It's a bomber coming out from Revol. Looks like a Betty. We better hightail it out of here. Forget about that sub. Not yet. He's probably escorting Sonny Boy back home. He hasn't seen us yet. Well, he'll sure look when he sees four torpedo wakes coming out of us. Uh, up scope. Up and down real fast. I just want to flash. The minute he sees torpedo wakes, he's going to fly over and blast us. Down scope. I know. And then water this clear, he can see the fillings in my teeth. But look, all he's got in the racks is an ordinary surface bomb. I got a good clear look at it. It's not a depth charge. It'll explode when it hits the surface. Most of the force will be dissipated in the air. It'll only shake us up. Only shake us up? Well, maybe rattle us around some. But I think we can take it with no damage. And I want that sub. This is a shooting observation. Open the outer doors forward. He's getting set to shoot. Stand by. Fire one. Two fired electrically. Two fired electrically. Torpedo jammed in the tube and is running hot. All stop. Jack, stop everything in this boat that vibrates. Everything. You take charge. Come, Mr. Rule, I'm on the way. There's another. He's breaking up. Over speed control link finally cut and stopped her. Where is she in the tube? I figure she's jammed about halfway out, sir. Did you try to close the outer door? Yes, sir, she wouldn't close. That's why I think she's about halfway up that tube. That bomb we took probably jarred her out. You want me to try to close it again? No. I don't want to do anything to jar that fish. It must be fully armed. The slightest movement will set her off now. Well, maybe we could suck it down the tube with the pump. We might. But if she broke away from whatever is jamming her and came back too hard against the rear end of the tube, bluey. Well, maybe we could surface. A diver could. We can't surface. Everything the Japanese got in Rabaul is probably on its way to murderers now. Let's get a little water over our heads, Bill. Control! Drop her down to 150 feet and hold her there. Aye, aye, sir. Let's break this thing up. A, we can't surface, they'll be all over us like a tent. B, we can't run for it. The vibration might explode that fish while it's still in the tube. Any concussion will set it off. And that includes anything they drop on us, and we can expect plenty pretty soon. So A, we can't stay and we can't go. B, we can't stay down and we can't come up. In fact, Bill, we haven't got any submarine at all. All we got is an extension of a torpedo and an armed one at that. Captain, there must be some way out of this. There is, if it works. She's a well-built boat. We know that from the beating she's taken. Now, she's stronger right here in the bow than anywhere else. Now, what breaks up submarines is concussion. With the Sea Dragon's sharp bow splitting that concussion wave in half, I think she'll live. With that torpedo in the tube? She's not gonna be in the tube. I'm gonna shoot it out. Chief, but I want 600 pounds of air behind that fish, and I want the biggest blast you can get. Aye, aye, sir. Conning tower, start backing very slowly. As soon as we begin to move, increase speed gradually. And keep on increasing until we're going astern at emergency speed. All right. This is our only chance, Bill. We'll be going backwards at full speed when we fire that fish. 
Now, if that warhead will just delay a couple of seconds when she blows, the fish will be far enough away to give us another chance. Of course, if it goes off the instant the air bangs against her. Captain, let me handle the firing key. And all the rest of you get out of here and dog the doors behind you. And if the bow of the ship blows off, perhaps you can save the boat. No, Bill. If she goes off in the tube, it won't make any difference where any of us are in this boat. But if she goes off outside the boat and blasts open something in here, we're going to need a damage control party right now to keep from sinking. 610 pounds, sir. That's all I've got. That ought to do it. Conning Tower, how are we doing? Mr. Miller doesn't think she can go any faster, sir. Very well. This is the captain. We're going to try to shoot this hot fish out of number three. I hope she clears the boat before she goes off. If she doesn't, it'll probably be the end of us. We have to take that chance. I just want you to know that we either do it this way or, or we surrender. And I don't think any one of us want to surrender. Good luck to all of you. I guess we're all set. Who wants the honor of deciding our fate? Let me do it, Captain. It's my torpedo. I can win two more matchsticks before we reach Pearl Harbor. <laughs> How are you feeling, sir? Just fine. You really poured in the coal this afternoon, Ronald. Say, by the way, did we uh, did we not sink that submarine? You sank her without a doubt. We all heard two hits and sound heard her break up and sink. <laughs> you foolish men in American submarines. Why don't you stay at home? Uh, Tokyo Rose. I wonder what that doll is. Why do you dare tonight? to venture out where the Imperial Japanese Navy will surely sink all your boats and drown all of you in the Black Black Sea? For instance, just today, Japanese air and sea forces sank your submarine Sea Dragon near a wall with the loss of all the men in her. The men who dare call themselves the Red Pirates of China Coast. <laughs> <laughs> for Lieutenant Commander Pete Farrell and all his crew. <laughs> I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. It is a pleasure to introduce to you Commander Charles K. Millow, who was torpedo and gunnery officer of the Sea Dragon. Rollo, an armed torpedo stuck in a tube, unfortunately doesn't happen every day. Just about everything happened to the Sea Dragon. The first thing, of course, was getting bombed in Manila Harbor the day after the attack on Pearl Harbor. That almost killed her, but she survived to make quite a record for herself. I hear a rumor that it got to be a thing on the Sea Dragon to wear earrings. Is there any truth in that? Well, after Tokyo Rose put that red pirates label on us, a lot of the men thought if we were pirates, we might as well dress the part. Well, how about you? Did you start carrying a cutlass? No, no, I was a beard grower. Rollo, you had a fine bunch of shipmates in the Sea Dragon, and I Glad you could be here to represent them. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you, Admiral. Please 
please join us again for another true and exciting story of the silent service. Thank you Oh, um.